to my channel if you're watching for the very first time hello my name is stacia i go by namaste on instagram so you can follow me over there if you're interested in seeing what i'm up to in my day-to-day -day life and just to get a glimpse of my life um as a jamaican in japan now as you can see by the title of this video we have some serious things to talk about right for those of who don't know or can't tell by my accent i am jamaican and i'm living in japan right so living in jamaica has probably desensitized me to a number of things or it hasn't exposed me to a number of things now i'm from a country or an island whatever you want to call it um where you know there are certain things that aren't a part of my everyday experiences so one of the things that is not a part of my everyday experience is racism so as a jamaican growing up in jamaica um, Jamaica has its problems with social issues. Um, we have classism, we have colorism, but because majority of the population is black, I think maybe 90% of the population is black, um, there are certain things that an American experience of a Jamaican can't relate to unless they're a Jamaican living in America. So when it comes down to racism, I understand the concept of racism, I understand implications of racism within a society, but that has never been my experience ever before. So I've traveled to the US before, but I've never been exposed to racism, or maybe I have, but I don't have the tools to always pick up on when racism is taking place or when something racist is being said or done to me, right? So with that in mind this experience was very i don't know what verbiage is best to describe what happened or how i felt in that moment but after the aftermath of what took place definitely took a toll on me and i wanted to share my experience with y'all so i experienced racism for the very first time and i wanted to talk about racism in japan now I know that many persons have spoken about this and one of the things I do want to say is that racism exists in Japan but if I'm going to be honest and if I'm going to be fair the kind of racism that exists isn't always in your face the way it is um, in a country like America and I don't want to be picking on America because America I mean America is the epicenter of it right now because of the the media and all of that um, but I do know racism exists in other countries for example like the UK and Canada it's not that I don't know that that's the truth but I'm going to just use America because it's kind of being publicized especially in a time like now so it's easy to just use them as an example so racism does exist in Japan um, but it is not in your face it's very very much covert um, it's undercover in a lot of ways and but it is if you are equipped with the tools to see it you will and over time after being involved or being ingratiated or being in the society you will understand or pick up the differences in treatment now being a foreigner here you're not going to be treated the same as a Japanese person because Japan is for Japanese of the rib japanese for japanese and they look out for their own more than anything else and i mean i'm not going to argue about that too much because that's really how it should be a country should look out for its own first and then everybody else is secondary so um so my friend and i we went out and we went to to korea town to have a have a meal so we had the meal and you know afterwards you were like we're not ready to go home right now so we decided that we were going to go to Shibuya we didn't have any specific plan in mind we just wanted to you know it was the night was still young and we didn't want to go home so I'm like yeah let's go so we go to Shibuya and we 
we went to a, a, a English speaking bar, but we didn't like the options that were available in terms of the masculine variety. So we went there and we didn't, we weren't feeling the place. The place wasn't as popping as we expected it to be. So we decided to go to the same English speaking restaurant. Which it's a it's a popular chain in Japan, among especially amongst English speakers. So we decided, you know what, we're going to go to the other one in another city. So we went to um, Yokohama. So we went to Yokohama and we went in and you know two beautiful girls walking two black chocolate goddesses walking and you know the crowd the the place is going to be silent for a bit and you're going to get a few stairs so we get we get we get that and we're walking and we have a seat so we're having a drink and um you know we see two japanese guys looking at us constantly every time we look up they're looking at us uh, so we're not paying that much mind. My friend goes to get a drink or get, get us drinks. And um, while we're there drinking, when she comes back with a drink and we're there drinking, um, one of the guys, one of the Japanese guys came over. No, mind you, he was hella drunk. Well, not drunk to the point where he couldn't control his movements or control um his words he was well he was slurring a bit but he wasn't like so much so that he was not collective in his thoughts hopefully that makes sense so we're there and he comes over and he's talking to us and his english is not the best so we were grappling for a few minutes to figure out what the hell was this dude saying right so he was there talking, 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 and uh, my friend wore her Jamaican mask, and apparently he knows of Jamaica, and he was saying Chensia is his favorite um, reggae singer. He knows Chensia, God knows how, but he knows her because she's not popular over here. So we're there talking, and I mean, he was cute. I saw him. I was like, you know, yeah, him, 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 like a buzz. him, him cute, he don't look too bad um so when he came over and he was talking like the minute he well not the minute but as the conversation gradually uh, progressed the conversation gradually progressed the interest level was like he and then at some point i was like hey <laughs> bye no goodbye your time has expired so we talked and we talked or we attempted to communicate that that sounds better we attempted to communicate and at some point he he leaves us and he goes to his other friend who was very 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 cute by the way um so he goes to his friend and um leaves us for the night so this other guy came came over he was african but he wasn't black he was from a country in africa Tunisia or one of those countries. I think that's the pronunciation. Yeah. So he comes over and he says to us, you know, he had introduced himself prior to the Japanese young man coming over to talk to us. Um, so he had introduced himself already and I told him I was already with my friend, so I don't really need to to entertain him right now because I wasn't alone. So after a few drinks well after a drink, my friend and I um you know, we were there talking and he came over again and he was he re reintroduced himself and asked us if we wanted to go over to his table where he had a friend who was apparently retired. Now, both of these men were white um, and the other man who, with whom we later spoke to, he he was an older man and he was from a European country. So we're there over there, you know, we're having good banter, we're talking for the most part, conversation is okay, you know. We're getting to know each other's culture and stuff like that. He's asking about Jamaica and we're asking about where he's from and the conversation went left. And this is where the conversation went left. So we're in the restaurant having drinks you know we're talking to each other we're getting close the one who came over to us he clearly wanted some pum pum and that was clearly evident based on how close he was trying to get to me you know and uh, 
I wasn't paying him any mind because I'm not attracted to him. And he just seemed a little bit too desperate for some cooch. So I didn't really pay him any mind. We, we talked, but I maintain a level of coldness, which I think communicated that I don't want you inside of my body. Right? So we're in the restaurant and a group of African guys came in, two of them. And we're there at the table talking to these two men and apparently based on what my friend told me the african guys walked by and when they saw us they had to turn back immediately so they turned and they came to us because i only saw when they, they they came to the table and they both started talking to me my friend was to my to my right and they came to my left and we start they started talking to me so i thought and this is this is my opinion their approach the african guys their approach to me was disrespectful and it was disrespectful because i was there in the middle of a conversation with the other guy the older the older man and they just started talking to me without any sort of pleasantries to say excuse me whatever or anything like that they just came and they just initiated conversation immediately hello where are you from what's your name whatever whatever so they just came there and they just started talking so because i thought it was disrespectful i said to them hi my name is stacia but you're interrupting a conversation right now so this ain't gonna happen basically so they were like you know apologetic they're like oh i'm sorry 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 and then they walked off so I turned to the older man and I said, I apologize for that, you know, and I apologize because it was rude. You don't just see someone talking to another person, male or female, and you just walk up to them and just start a whole conversation without acknowledging the other persons at the table. So <clears throat> once I apologized for their behavior, because I thought it was rude, Homeboy proceeds to say, I call them monkeys. And it was at this moment, I was like, um, what? Monkey? And he realizes that he, he messed up. And then he proceeds to, to go on a long tirade explaining why what he said was not racist so i looked at him and i said of all the animals there to choose from you chose monkey why monkey of all of them and he gives this half-assed explanation as to why he says monkeys and all of them and proceeds to say that he doesn't call he does not only call black people monkey he calls other people's monkey just based on their their own actions and stuff like that so i i i i thought it to be upsetting but also very interesting how it is that my friend and i who are black people could sit in his presence and he could be so gracious towards us but then when there are black, other black persons involved, and I'm not sure if his response was because of them being African or them being black men, but either way, describing someone as a monkey, make it make sense. Make it make sense. And it was that moment that I realized that you really cannot be too sure with these kinds of people because there are persons who will entertain you for whatever reason that they have, but then the same courtesy that is extended towards you is not extended towards other persons who might be in the same ethnic group, right? Or same race, that's what I should say. So I'm there flabbergasted as to how I was in the presence of someone who thought the way he thought and felt confident enough in my presence and my friend's presence to say i call them monkeys what the fuck like 
And I, I kid you not, the energy level between myself and my friend went from 60 to like zero in the space of a minute. Like he's there for five minutes trying to explain why what he said was not racist and I'm not yet convinced. And I think he realized that because soon after he left. I don't even know what to say because I've never been in a situation where I felt the need to, to protect someone of my race in that way. No, like I said, their approach, the, the black guys, their approach was not respectful. But, 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 under no circumstance am I going to sit there and to entertain someone who is disrespecting anyone in my race, especially, especially when you are going to compare them to an animal that you know that's racist. That is not anything new to anyone, right? And for centuries, people have been comparing black people to gorilla. And for you to open your mouth and to look at us and say, oh, I call them monkeys? Huh? I've never experienced, and I mean, it didn't directly happen to me, but I felt like it happened to me. And I don't know if there's such a thing as secondhand racism, but the fact that this is still happening in 2020, and I keep saying to people like this is part of the reason why I I'm not interested in procreating because I can't imagine having a son or a daughter and have someone see them that way or to be worried about their safety and well being because someone might say or do something on the basis of their skin color that takes them from the land of the living or does something to ruin their life emotionally or physically or financially or any way shape or form like i cannot imagine especially having nephews black nephews for the entire night i just could not come to term with what happened it it was it was it was an experience that made me more aware of just how complex the idea of racism is there are those persons who are outright racist and they don't like black people in general it doesn't matter the hue it doesn't matter if you're a woman or if you're a man they just don't like you but to add the layer of accepting some black people and not others for whatever reason gender or nationality whatever it is like i was not expecting that because i'm thinking that if we are invited to your table i.e black women then that's not the sort of thing i would expect that would come from your mouth because i'm expecting some level of sensitization and uh, can I tell you guys something like I literally cried that night and I know it might not come across as a big deal to some people but it's a big deal for me especially since I've never been in, been in an encounter where something like that was said to me or to another person whether or not I knew them like it was a big deal for me because I've never experienced anything like that and to be in amongst someone for that much time and to find out that this is how you describe black people who you think don't act in a very polite way like no no so i wanted to talk about this because i wanted to let people know that racism is something that is clearly more complex than we than we think it is it is something that's clearly pervasive throughout the world and it's not just in Jamaica. Obviously I've I've I think I've experienced some sort of prejudice before, but I didn't pick it up until afterwards, until this happened, it triggered that memory. I was in a class and a, a parent asked me, Why do we drink dirty water? 
and I was like who the hell told you that people in Jamaica are drinking dirty water and I was like huh what like that don't make no sense or where where you get that from no i know that jamaica is not the richest country but um it's called the land of wood and water for a reason we're not over there drinking dirty water or is it that the media over here like much of the media rest of the world portray black people as poor and impoverished so much so that you can fathom the idea that the water in Jamaica is actually that comes from the pipe it's actually better than the one in Japan by far so I wanted to talk to you guys to let you know that even though being in Japan is it feels so much more safer than America or Jamaica that doesn't mean that you're going to escape the difference in treatment that you're going to be given by virtue of being a foreigner and by virtue of being black a lot of Japanese people who are decent human beings who don't treat people differently might not be able to understand and I had to sit my friend Japanese friend down and explain to her that we aren't all treated the same like even though you're cool with black people and you're cool with foreign people that doesn't mean that every single person has that experience because i'm on the train sometimes and people don't want to sit beside me that's an everyday experience as soon as i get up they sit down or or whatever but that's an everyday experience so you have to understand that while it's not in your face it's very subtle but it's there and i mean like i said it's safer here than it is in america uk canada or jamaica but that doesn't mean that you are going to be excused from any differential treatment on the basis of not being Japanese or on the basis of being black, right? So I wanted to talk to you guys about this. I don't know if I overreacted. Let me know in the comments if you thought that I overreacted or if it's something that I am overanalyzing. Um, I don't think so, but I want to hear what you guys think. In the meantime, I'm looking forward to what you guys have to say. In the meantime... Thank you guys for watching. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, but thank you if you've made it this far. And um, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments bar below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers at the end of September. So please share this video with a friend. Um, we're trying to get to 1,000 by the end of 2020. So help a girl out. Like, comment, share, subscribe. After you watch this, go watch another video or two or three. Share on your Instagram, share on your Facebook, share on WhatsApp, wherever you can share it. Share it, girl, share it. Um, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time in the next video. Bye, guys.